Okay, we're going to put the carburetor right on that hole there. That's the intake. It's right here. It's going to go on the gas line, gas line like that and get bolted up. We might have to shorten that a skosh. And then there's my... Uh, the governor arm there and the spring on them on the carburetor mount right here right there that kind of stuff's hard to show when you don't have an arm coming out of the middle of your forehead right okay put a little light on the subject that's going right on the muffler hey yeah yeah this is the hard part you guys I might have to shorten that gas line a little bit. Okay, so this went right to there, the middle one. Go figure. That's where all the scratches are. Governor spring attached. Turn it upside down. Shut off. Working. Barely. We stick that on. Ah! Stick that on the one car bolt that's there. Good. Now I got to measure to see how that plugs into the other one. And I think I need a throttle arm to the throttle. Well, here it is, right here. This is a really complicated old machine. <laughs> I'm just dealing with the throttle cable right now. Okay, I gotta get my act together, guys. I'll be right back. All right. Well, I consider myself an old-time Tecumseh mechanic, but I had to take the muffler off, and then I could get out that screw there, Whoops. there, the carburetor screw and then I also had to take the gas line my new gas line off and put it back on again but we're there choke open choke open can you see that yes you can and then throttle is a little sketchier feels like the uh, ah yes it is the uh, arm is rubbing on something there we go good so I'm going to go just have a break. I don't have any parts left. I had to supply one of my own nuts, a fine threaded nut. And we have one nut left for the, uh, pardon me, one nut left for the box that goes over top from the starter. That's okay. I'm going to get some water, have a little break. Thanks guys. Alright guys, everything's on but the cover and the three cover screws. Two of them go into the carburetor and one goes into the housing. Actually goes into the muffler. What I'm going to do now that we have control over this bad boy is I'm going to stand it up on its nose and I'm just going to oil the chassis a little bit and see if anything's going to be an issue. I don't even know if that's forward or reverse. D for drive. Okay, finished mucking around and I got a I'll be right back. All right. Now we're gonna try and start this old girl. This is the moment of truth because I don't, I'm not getting any um, motion on the gearbox. Put some fuel in it. How many glurt? Well, yeah, we got to open the uh, fuel valve too. Let's just put six or seven glurps in there. My glurps are getting running thin. And here's the gas valve. So it's now sending gas to the carburetor. And if I push up on the little valve here, I should get gas flow. And I do. 
So now the main thing, when I hit the starter button and we go to choke, like that, we should have fire. You ready? Well, that's a really good, successful first run. Try it again. We need to choke now. I guess I better get some oxygen in here. A little surgy, I'm not happy with that. I'm afraid to test the gears, get it right on the floor.
Furnace alert. All right. Let's bring this in a bit so you can see, maybe. Can you see this box right here? I had no leaks on the carburetor until I installed the heater box. This is called the heater box. And on snowblowers, even back in 1973, there were no uh, air filters. But the cable to the starter is really tight and it goes around the carburetor. I can feel it just pulling the carburetor over to that, to that direction. Right? So I'm going to take this off, find my leak. It might even be on the main bolt. We don't know. See, there's, the gas is turned off and it's still leaking a little. Could be just the rubber O-ring on the new needle. I don't know. I hate leaks. This is an amazing one. Usually these boxes, I'm yelling because of the furnace. Usually these boxes, the original screws are all gone. But because this is a hard machine to use, it wasn't used much. Okay, let's just do this. I'm ready to say goodbye to this guy. Okay, can you see right here? Yeah, I think you can. So there's two screws that go into the carburetor at the bottom, and one goes into the muffler at the top. for a leak. See how it pulled over as soon as I disconnected it? And lay it down. Now I expect that this carburetor has been torqued to the side. And yes, it, the whole thing is leaning over actually. It's not closing off the fuel. 7 16 ratcheting wrench. Put a rag down. There will be some spillage. Still dripping. I thought that gas was turned off. Now I had a quarter of an inch of gas in the tank last night when I found this. And I still do. out of there too, eh? Now, is the whole carburetor jiggered off to the side or is it just the uh, needle and seat? I'm going to let a little gas go. Make sure the needle is still viable. Yes, it is. Just let some gas go. Okay, I think that float needs to be adjusted a little bit. Looks a little tight. I'm going to jack this up a little bit more. I always bang my head on the handles on these. I'm going to do a couple of things. That's as high as she'll go. Number one, I'm going to increase the gap of the float. Gonna need good light for this. I have to learn to sit down when I can. Okay, that's a little tight. I can just tell by sight. I've been doing Tecumseh many years now. Okay, that's probably a little too much, but there we go. I'm gonna check this O-ring for the quality just to see what it looks like. I hate using up my Tecumseh O-rings, but I guess that's what they're for. Oh, that's a brand new one. Now we have to reset the engine uh, mixture setting again. I'll give her one turn and a quarter. Okay, so now it was full. I don't want to take that carburetor off. Okay, just a uh, just a kind of a word of interest, right? This is the 50-year-old today, this year, 
this bowl is 50 years old. I am going to replace it because sometimes these little releasers are nice, but the average guy doesn't use them. And this is a modern Tecumseh. The only difference is the uh, size of the hole in the bowl. And this one says Larson Power Products. And this one says Tecumseh, Tecumseh Products on the, on the writing. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to switch to not this bowl, but one with the same size hole. And that little bump in the bottom there, right there, that is where the button would go. Okay, hi guys, I'm back. This is just a small Tecumseh lesson. Tecumseh Larson carburetor lesson. This is the carburetor, right? The bowl goes on like that, and then the float floats in the gas. Are you with me? This is this is like 101, right? And the gap between here, here, and here is very important that it's set properly because that determines when the when the float stops and how much fluid floats in the bowl. So this little tool. And I use it quite a bit, not every time, but quite a bit, probably once a week, because I get a lot of Tecumseh stuff in here. This tool is number 670377. Let's see if you can get an eye on that. Yes, you can, baby. And this little wedge that's cut into the tool on the handle, right there, that flat spot, that's to measure the height of the bowl, right? Can you see that? And right now this bowl is just a, a, a tad high, which means that the gas in the, in the uh, carburetor is gonna be a little bit low. And this is important. And the one that was on this machine, that I've got on the machine, it was set, I never really checked it, but naturally it sat for 50 years. The gas level in the carburetor was a tad bit high. So what I do is I put a screwdriver in here like a fulcrum, and I just bring it down, and I bend, where's another? I bend this tab, which has the needle on it sitting like that, right? That's just sitting like that. The distance between that needle and that tab is how you set the height of the of the float. So on this one, it's already assembled. I take a screwdriver, I stick it between, if you can see, between the float and the frame, and I just give it a little push. Like that. And now we should be a little bit closer. Yes, we're almost there. Just like it's just a... Oh, that was a big... I went too far. And you can see there's an angle there. Can you see that angle here? It's not quite right again. So I'm just going to give that little tab another bend the other way. This is spare carb parts, don't forget. I'm not using this one. Ooh, that looks pretty good to me now. And if it's not... Oh, yeah. It's perfect. Okay. So that's already done. Uh, no. Is that done on this one now? Let's just have a little lucky poop. Now, I'm going to check that height before you guys come and look. It's perfect. All right. Now, let's get, you, get some light on there for you. I'm going to bring you in just to show you what I've got here. My hand is here. It's right there. There's the bowl. There's the gap. Okay, I got it. This O-ring was just a bit too fat. And it is actually an original Tecumseh O-ring from the 631021 Baker. But this carburetor is so old that I ordered some very good, because you can't get, it's very hard to get the OEMs anymore. I ordered this, this little kit. Originally I ordered a kit of 10 that were terrible. 
but the, the thickness of this o-ring works both on the ones with the primer bulb and these old ones without the primer bulb, just the choke. So now I'm going to tighten this guy up. we got two problems still, right? We have to set the mixture at one and a quarter turns. Let's get our logs out of here. Oops. You guys got to watch. Are you watching? Yes, you are. Always somebody watching me in here, right? Not to be morbid, but if something happened to me, you guys would be watching. I'm trying to get a hold of Trudy. He said, 911! Turn on the gap. I'm just going to let it sit. Then we got problem number two. This devil. I'd love to move it to the other side. I'm not going to worry about this now. But I am going to use the automatic juice starter. Open a door. Get the electricity. Time we hear that song, someone's at the door. Some of you would know what I'm talking about, and others just think I'm just a nutty old man. Okay, on the hillbillies, old black and white TV show from the 60s and 70s. They had a fancy house, but they never had a fancy house before, and somebody would ring the front doorbell, ding dong, ding dong, 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 ding dong, and old Jed would say, Every time we hear that song, there's someone at the front door. Okay, I'll get back to work. Now, we have to see if we have leakage. Looks good so far. Okay, we need full choke. Mid throttle. Right on. We, this, okay. This thing. <laughs> the blades turn as soon as the engine's running. And I have checked. Absolutely no neutral for the augers. Isn't that wild? This should just fire right up. Nothing's in the way. The augers aren't going to hit the pender for lift. something. Look at this in here. Are you guys still watching? Yes you are. Look at that. Massive gears. All for front drive. That's the throw out bearing right there. That's for the drive on the wheels. And the augers turn all the time. There's no way to turn the augers off that I can see. Nuts, huh? Okay, here it is. I got the low RPMs at 1900. And I got the high RPMs. Oh my gosh, you can turn it all the way up to 4000. But it, because there's only one gear, uh, it would be going 15 miles an hour at that RPM, so there's never going to be a risk of anybody turning it up that high. Uh, anyway, uh, there's no stop, like throttle stop for that high RPM. But anyway, it, it actually, we'll just turn it to a, like a mid-range, put some choke on it, start it up, should be alright. We're on the lift, we're... The augers turn as soon as the engine runs, that's the only thing that bothers me about this guy.
need this one anymore. Thank you very much. Oh yes, you will. <laughs> one second. So I put stops on here. Because if we came, this is for the chute adjustment. If you went past that point, it wouldn't move. And if we went past that point, it wouldn't move. So that's good. And it actually hits on the bracket here. Right there. And there. You know what that is? It's just electrical tape. Done tight. Now the last four wraps are loose. It won't undone. So yeah, we're looking pretty good here, guys. The scariest snow blower I've ever worked on. I think the last single stage I had was a little bit newer and it had a switch to turn off the auger when you were idling. <laughs> so I'm just going to check underneath for the leaks again. Like I said I wasn't going to do. It's dry. We're good. Thanks a lot. Over and out! Well, I hope you got some of that. Look at that. Those augers turn all the time. <laughs>